Hey there, everyone. Time to review The Watchmen in 2008, the latest 2009. I read The Watchmen graphic novel or comic. It was phenomenal. Whenever the movie came out around a year later or around that time, I actually read the graphic novel in order to prepare myself for the movie. I enjoyed the movie, caught it at midnight, so I was a little dazed and confused and tired, but I enjoyed it. And then recently this year, I binge-watched the television series that is supposed to be, um, I don't know what you call it, uh, prequel is before, sequel. Uh, yeah, you, you, I guess it's a sequel of sorts. It's years later. You have one character of continuity, which is the Manhattan figure, the blue glowy nudist, so a uh, demigod or god. So I want to talk about some similarities between the graphic novel, the film, and the television series, and then maybe some distinct areas in review. Overall, I suggest you watch all of them. I think some people who are bothered by some of the inclusivity of certain characters, whether it be due to gender and sexuality or whether it be due to race, may have issues with the television series. But as long as somebody's truly open-minded and these things are irrelevant to them, I think you'll enjoy all of them. It's all great works of science fiction or fantasy. We'll get back to that point. So the first question that I want you to think about when you're either reading the graphic novel, watching the movie, or watching the television series is the classic vigilante question. And the classic vigilante question is, does the justice system, does the system that it is called a justice system, the so-called justice system, the squo, the status quo, does it work as it is now, or does it need some sort of outside entities to take matters into their own hands to work outside of the system? So if the cops are there to help you, that's fine. If they're not there to help you, what happens? What do you do when they're not here to help you? So uh, the vigilante is going to normally have to stop to, to step in and deal out or dish out their extra ju judicial justice. Now, when they deal out their extra judicial outside of extra, meaning outside of the judicial system or judiciary justice there when, when they begin to provide alternative justice services or the, the the alternative production of justice as you know a way of them seizing the means of production the question is who then watches the watchmen and that's how it's asked in the movie and in the comic and uh, I believe also in the television series. I may be wrong about that. So you have, uh, spoiler alert, an alien invasion that is brought together by this anti-hero or anti-villain, uh, someone who defies classification. Um, but I think most people would call a villain, but, but walks and strides the line of graying the realities between it. And I think one of the beautiful things about the idea of a vigilante and especially explored in the Watchmen in the graphic novel movie and television series is it makes you question who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. Is there even such a thing or is everybody walking a line of gray morality? And so it makes you think and ponder in, in this way. So shout out to, to the creator of, of this series and, and everybody who had it adapted to more audiences through television and through cinema. So it makes you question what morality is. It makes you question the cookie cutter view maybe that you would see in Shazam and, and the early days of Superman. And it makes you wonder who really is good, who really is bad, and what factors make me believe that? You know, Are there some assumptions? Are there some underlying presumptions and assumptions, some pretentiousness about the way in which I look at the status quo and the provision of justice thereof. So anyway, there's this alien invasion introduced by this guy, real or fake, I'll let you decide once you uh, look into it as Eddie Bravo, the great Eddie, great and powerful Eddie Bravo, jujitsu master, conspiracy theoretician par excellence would often say in the internet. And the alien invasion is supposed to unite all the varying factions of the earth. Interestingly enough, President Ronald Reagan, former actor, 
man whose first, middle, and last names add up, according to Killer Mike, to 666 Ronald Wilson Reagan, used to warn the public that perhaps we needed an alien invasion. There's a speech you could look up. Just type Ronald Reagan alien invasion and you could find it. And he used to warn us that we needed an alien invasion in order to unite the globe. This is also the premise of Independence Day with Will Smith, who's been in the news lately for certain entanglement issues that have caught the Twitterverse and other places uh, that has caught their attention and that has caught it very well. Another form of a worldwide unification is the threat of mutually assured destruction, as it's known in game theory, right? Uh, MAD, MAD, mutually assured destruction. In game theory and in politics, you have this idea that is behind the Cold War and all of the, the smaller minor wars within the Cold War, wherever it would potentially heat up. And that idea is that if we all have enough nukes, right? If someone has enough nukes to nuke the earth three times over and someone has enough to do it 10 times over, what the hell are we even talking about anymore? And why are there still poor people if we're wasting our money on multitudes and, and factors of being able to destroy the earth? What does it mean to destroy the earth more than one time? Who's even left? Who's going to be the remnant? So that's there. And in the television series, you find the idea of white supremacy within the actual systems of, of power, not just as outside vigilantes themselves, but within the systems of power, reminiscent of my review of Black Klansmen, if you go back and, and watch that review. Another theme explored throughout The Watchmen in the various forms, graphic novel, film, and television series, is can man or human become God through science, which raises the next question, which is what is the difference between science fiction and fantasy? There are some places in books and literature and film where it's more obvious when it's in the past and it's some elves and dwarves, it's fantasy. And when it's in the future, it's science fiction. But sometimes science and magic meet up. We see this in the Marvel Universe. We see this in the DC Universe. We see this in the famous film Prestige um, with Hugh Jackman and Scarlett Johansson. And I'm forgetting his name right now. I'm so mad at myself. But the guy from American Psycho, I believe he's Welsh. And uh, he also played Batman. It's killing me in Chris Nolan's version. Anyway, I'm sure you'll get it for me in the comments or I'll be able to look it up easily after this. I leave a little bit of room for the spirit when I do these things. So you'll have to forgive me. In, in any event, uh, the Prestige and Marvel and DC all have had characters who practice what would be considered genuine magic versus characters who are people of science. And sometimes these worlds meet and sometimes the lines are blurred. Like I mentioned earlier, the lines of morality are blurred. The lines between science and magic, man and God are blurred, especially in the character of Mr. Manhattan. So I hope you go read and or watch the graphic novel, the film and the television series. And hopefully my two cents on the matter has helped you think a little bit more deeply, a little bit more critically on the subject.